This week's episode is brought to you by blistering heat and better light because I am shooting during the day as opposed to my regular shooting hours. So I've been thinking, I really like science fiction. So when it comes to science fiction, I sometimes have a dilemma. And here's what it is. Science fiction is broadly divided into you have your hard sci-fi and you have your soft sci-fi. And if you don't know, the distinction has to do with the realness of the science involved. So a great example to hard sci-fi would be Arthur C. Clarke's A Space Odyssey series. And in that series, Clarke really tries to make sure that the science that he presents in these books is very, very realistic and actually could be done. And soft sci-fi, on the other hand, is where you have a lot of scientific sounding things, but very little basis to them in real life. This could be things like space magic, where you can travel fast than light with no ramifications on the space-time continuum. So in soft science fiction, you don't really care about the real world. You don't have to because the science serves to act as a backdrop for all the other cool stuff that they're happening there. No one really cares about how or why. For some weird reason, I always thought I had to choose between hard sci-fi and soft sci-fi. And for the longest time, I was convinced that if I wanted to write something myself, I would make it hard sci-fi. At the time when I was thinking like that, I had just finished reading all four of the Space Odyssey books back to back. I was really impressed with the realism conveyed in those books because it felt like these things could be real that I could personally experience them at one day. But then I realized that when you start writing like that, or when you start reading other stuff like that, you realize that you're very limited and that kind of gets boring at times. Let's say you want to write like a big epic about space travel and then you want to make space travel realistic. When that happens, then you need to account for stuff like relativism. So if your spaceship is going through space and time at the speed of light, time will move more slowly for you and it will move much faster for anyone outside right so that's a big problem because when that happens then you cannot be like oh yeah i was on planet a it was yesterday and i came back to planet b but except when you go travel from planet a which is in one star system and you go to planet b which is another star system a lot of time has passed actually and that works in some cases but if you want to make like a very interactive spacey stuff you need to let go of some of the realism and this brings me to the happy middle ground, where you can have some of both. How do they do this? Well, it's very simple. You take the realism of human interactions, and then you mix it with the space magic-like science fiction of soft sci-fi. And when I talk about this, this is the book that I'm thinking about. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chain. This book is everything. <laughs> It has your soft sci-fi where there is like some sort of magical wormhole making mechanism and you have your aliens who all happen to be humanoids and whatnot. But because it's soft sci-fi, you don't really care about a lot of the science behind how these things work. You can take them for granted because the characters in the book are very realistic and you see how these people would interact within the given scientific reality. The focus is more on the humanoids than it is on the technology, which I think is now my favorite type of sci-fi. The main reason why I'm thinking about all this right now is because I'm going through Dan Simmons's Hyperion and that book is phenomenal. I can't really begin to explain why I feel so um, excited about this book. It's new, it's unlike anything I've ever read before. Simmons doesn't even try to explain how the science in his book works because it doesn't matter. It makes for some really fun backdrop. It just is like, you know, yet another thing in the setting that the main characters have to deal with. The most interesting part of the book is not the kind of scientific future that Simmons has created for us. In fact, that has very little to do with the actual worth and value of this book. Like, if you compare this to a Space Odyssey, that doesn't happen. Space Odyssey is obsessed with the science in it. It's very realistic in how it wants to portray this world. So much so that the human point of view depicted in Clark's story is reduced to simply being awestruck. Science is amazing. The things that we have done, you're filled with like a inspiration and awe. Whereas it's not the science that does this in Hyperion. What's interesting in Hyperion is that it treats what a space odyssey treats as being awe-inspiring as mundane. Space travel is mundane. You know, all these different teleportation technologies they have is mundane. And as such, you can just simply focus on how the humans are interacting with one another. 
There are a bunch of other books that I would love to talk about, but I don't think I have enough time for that. Maybe I'll talk about them in the future. Maybe I'll convert this entire channel into a book review club. Maybe I'll start doing book reviews. Would you be interested in that? What kind of sci-fi do you like? Do you like the hard type? Do you like the soft type? Or do you like the middle ground type like I do? The, the, the Goldilocks sci-fi, basically. And do you have any recommendations for me? I'm, I'm always looking for more new content to devour. And if you have any interesting sci-fi books, out there, maybe you should let me know. In the description below, I leave a list of some of my favorite sci-fi books that I've read in the past few years. And if you've read any of them, let me know. We'll chat in the comments. I love responding to comments if there are. Uh, I hope I survived the heat, so see you later.